Uh, welcome, this is Professor Boltuck, and this is the discussion lecture on the electron transport chain. So let's begin with the molecules NADH and FADH2. These molecules are coenzymes. They are also electron acceptors or electron transporters. They are the molecules that are going to set off this reaction, this series of uh, reactions known as the electron transport chain. So, where did they come back, come from? So remember, here's glycolysis. Let me get my drawing pencil. In glycolysis, we made two molecules of NADH. These molecules of NADH were formed in the cytoplasm. And then they migrated to the electron transport chain. If this cell is a eukaryotic cell, it has mitochondria. So this, these two molecules of NADH are going to move into the mitochondria. However, if this cell is a prokaryotic cell, well, there is no mitochondria. So these molecules are going to stay in the, in the cytoplasm. But if this is the edge of the cells right here where the cell membrane is, they're going to migrate just to the edge of the cell membrane. Also during the Krebs cycle, the Krebs cycle produced six more NADH. So NADH right here, and produced two molecules of FADH2. If again, this is a eukaryotic cell, there is a mitochondria, so this is going to be made in the mitochondria, that's where the Krebs cycle takes place. If this is a prokaryotic cell, the Krebs cycle occurs in the cytoplasm. So again, just like the other two NADH, these molecules Will, make, will migrate to just the underneath of the cell membrane, the plasma membrane. So what's the point of this electron transport chain? What we really want to do is convert all those NADH and FADH2s back to their oxidized version. So let's see how that comes. How that okay, so here is a membrane, this little blue area right here. Now this membrane in the drawing, they say that it's the inner mitochondrial membrane. So if you remember, here's a mitochondria, and that's the membrane, the outer membrane of the mitochondria, and then there's an inner membrane inside the mitochondria. The inner membrane has these cristae, these little uh, internal regions, and what we're talking about is, I'm making dots here, these dots Okay, let's try that again without having this, the zooming key. Let's get my pen back. Here's the mitochondria, the outer membrane. Here's the inner membrane with the cristae. In between these two membranes, there are space in here. But the, the Krebs cycle, or I should say, the, yeah, the Krebs cycle uh, took place inside here. And these dots are going to be the resulting NAD and FAD molecules. They are going to align across this membrane right here that represents this blue line right here. So that's the inner mitochondrial membrane. This is only true if the cells are eukaryotic. If the cells are prokaryotes, such as bacteria and archaea, they do not have mitochondria. So this membrane is going to be the prokaryote, uh, the plasma membrane. So we're going to have the flow of electrons. We're going to, this picture shows the NADH that is circled already. It has the electrons. It's going to donate it to the um, electron carriers, the chromophores, that are part of the electron transport chain. So this is a cytochrome. Um, there's going to be a series of these. And as the electrons travel from one molecule to another, they're also going to serve as a pump. They're going to remove some hydrogen protons. So remember we made a lot of hydrogen protons during the um, oxidation reduction steps. So as well as other reactions that occur in the cell, these hydrogen protons are plentiful and they serve as the basis of pH. But in this case, during the electron transport chain, these hydrogen protons are exported from the inside of the inner membrane of the mitochondria or the cytoplasm to outside the other side of the membrane. So here's the electrons of NADH. They are transferred to the first electron carrier. That's a redox reaction. So NADH becomes NAD+. It is reoxidized. 
why do we want to reoxidize NAD plus? So that it can go back and, and be used during glycolysis and the Krebs cycle. Because if we don't re reox if we do not reoxidize these molecules, then we will no longer be able to undergo glycolysis or the Krebs cycle. So we've achieved our goal here. We've transferred the electrons to this electron carrier. He is uh, not as electronegative as his neighbor, so his neighbor is going to grab onto those electrons. We're going to release a little bit more energy in the form of pumping out um, the hydrogen protons. We'll get more outside. His neighbor is also more electronegative. He's going to grab onto these electrons. And eventually we have an oxygen molecule here. Oxygen is very, very strongly electronegative. That means that he's going to pull the electrons from this molecule to itself. And they're showing you the end result. They're not showing you the intermediate steps, which are toxic. We'll talk about that later. But the ultimate goal is that we're going to make water molecules. So what happened here? We didn't make any more energy at this point. And I actually forgot to mention FADH2. FADH2 does the same thing, except they do not normally react with the very first electron carrier, so they result in making less um, ATP in the long run. But we haven't made ATP yet. All we did is we transferred electrons and we pumped out hydrogen protons. That part is the electron transport chain. Now, let me erase all these markings because it's getting a little crazy. I want to focus on this area right here. That area is called chemiosmosis. There's my pen reacting again. Let me uh, erase that part and write chemiosmosis. So chemiosmosis basically relates to this area right here. What happened to all those protons? they're going to actually, there's a large gradient up top here, so a lot of positive charges. When a lot of positive charges or negative charges come together, they want to repel from each other. So that's what's happening with these protons. They're taking up space in this little area, and they want to push apart. So that gradient's going to force them through this, the membrane again, but they're going to go through this channel that is part of the ATP synthase. ACE, A-S-E, that means it's an enzyme. Synthase means it's going to synthesize, it's going to make more ATP. To do that, it's going to start out with the molecule adenine diphosphate, ADP. It's going to interact with a phosphate group to make adenine triphosphate. Here is our energy source. The fact that we're coupling this reaction with the oxidating oxidation of NAD plus and FADH, we're going to call this step oxidation phosphorylation because we're adding a phosphate group to NAD, I'm sorry, to ADP to form ATP. Now all these electron, all, all these protons up here, they're going to convert approximately 34, if I can get the 4 here, it's not going to work, between 34 to 36, sometimes this pen doesn't work, 34 to 36 molecules of ATP. That's a lot. From glycolysis, we only make a net gain of two molecules of ATP. From the Krebs cycle, again, we make a net, uh, a net gain of two molecules of ATP. But it's only during this last step of chemiosmosis do we make the majority of our molecules of ATP. So if you follow the lectures from glycolysis all the way to the electron transport chain to chemiosmosis, you've realized that we've oxidized glucose to six molecules of carbon dioxide and generated a large amount of ATP molecules. So we generated some energy. This pathway was, was a, um, a catabolic pathway and we oxidized glucose. So that's it for this lecture on the electron transport chain.